Hello everyone, I'm here at a Tesla Supercharger. I've had access for about one month. There was a 99 day delay. We were supposed to get access on January 15th. Kia finally got access on the 24th of April. But anyways, I've been charging at Tesla Superchargers across the Southwest region for about one month. And this video will show you everything you need to know to get started and to get charging at the Supercharger. So let's get into it. Behind me is a typical Tesla Supercharger version 3. This layout is a little bit different. You can see this other video in El Paso, Texas. That's a better layout. Uh, in this current layout here, the Tesla you can see behind this other vehicle, they would normally have the charge point instead of on the passenger side, they'd be on the driver's side. So technically I'm taking up two supercharging stalls. And this is a look at a Tesla version 3 supercharger. So there's no built-in magic dock and the cord is a little bit short. You can see the cord's only about three feet or one meter. So it's quite short and you have to use an adapter. You get your own adapter. Um, I wouldn't recommend the Kia adapter. Get an A to Z uh, Amphenol Electron. So let me show you how to activate a Tesla supercharger. Right now, let's go over to the El Paso location. So I would recommend uh, plugging in the Tesla connector, which you can see right there, into the adapter. Okay, so it clicked in there, so then you have this contraption here, the adapter with the Tesla plug, and then you go over to plug it in, but uh, you activate in the app first, so you can see in the app here, we're at the South Desert, or the North Desert location in El Paso, we're gonna say charge here, and that flap wants to keep closing. So we're on three, Charlie, that's the post number, which was there at the bottom, start charging, and then it gives instruction, and then now we can plug it in attach the adapter and then plug it in after there we go make sure it clicks tolerances aren't the best and it has the app instructions there which you can see on the side of the screen and the session should start momentarily charge port locked these cables are a little bit short kind of have to step over a little bit the cables are short they're about one meter version 4 sites will fix that issue so charging started, and hopefully this one does not error out. 3D was having some issues. You can see here in the Tesla app right there, that's where the charging information. So yeah, current charge rate will ramp up. I have technical data here, OBD2 data. Uh, Kia EV6 this is the first generation, model year 2023. They'll have a limit of about 96 kilowatts, 230 amp limit here, which will be about 96 kilowatts into the battery. And you can see here the battery is having the amperage basically to 122 amps and then the voltage it has to boost the voltage up to the battery packs voltage which is 772 and the test supercharger can give about 470 volts max and the vehicle is asking for 423 volts yep output voltage 425 basically Okay, everyone, I'm coming to you from uh, Clayton Ranch Market now here in Clayton, New Mexico for a quick insert shot here. So this is the supercharger here. Now, this is an example of a supercharger with a very poor layout, you can see. You have to back in at this weird angle. I think this supercharger is even difficult for Cybertruck to make it. Yeah, so you can see here I have to back in. It's diagonal. It's a weird one. So yeah, old, old equipment here. And yeah, so some of the layout might not be good. You just, you know, activate here, stall one alpha, one A, it worked okay. It took a little longer to initiate. This is an older unit, 2020. Uh, but yeah, the charging time really isn't that big of a difference. Here at like 98% battery, you can see there's a screenshot. Yeah, it's not that much slower than Electri America, or other 800 volt EVs, sorry, or other 800 volt chargers. So yeah, maybe the Tesla Supercharger I got here 44%. It's really not that much slower, honestly. So yeah, anyways, back to El Paso. But anyways, that's a quick how to do it at the version three supercharger. Let's go over to the older version two supercharger, uh, which will not work. I'll just give you a quick video to look at that, but make sure you use the Tesla app. It'll show all these superchargers, which you can use. But here's a quick technical look at an old version two, obsolete version two site and why it will not work. So let's go about 120 miles to the north to Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Okay, everyone, there's my car back there and we're at a fine example of a Tesla version two supercharger. Now, none of these superchargers uh, version two will be open to any third party EVs and they're obsolete even by Tesla standards. How you can tell, this cable is air cooled, not liquid cooled. 
makes a different noise, you have the silver ring. Silver ring means it's version two. So these are version two cabinets back here. And just a little technical uh, specs on them. There's a look at the spec label. So yeah, they're very old. I'll try to show a picture somebody else took of what's inside these. These are essentially a stack of Tesla Model S AC to DC converters, the onboard chargers of the Tesla Model S. They stack them in the line. So this is kind of not really purpose-built hardware. How you can tell on the consumer facing charging pedestals or dispensers, the lettering, they'll only do A and B. So you'll see how it's labeled. This is a trailer spot. So 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. 3a 3b and so on and so forth and typically there are no more than eight usually version 2 installs most of them are eight stalls max and they stopped installing version twos in about 2020 i think 2018 to 2020 is when they transitioned to full version 3. now there are a few sites especially in this state in new mexico gallup is one of them along with trinidad and colorado there are hybrid sites so they start with version 2 and then at the same site they added on some version 3 um, dispensers and other setup. So they have a completely different setup, uh, but it's still at the same site. Those are not open to third party just for, because they'd cause confusion since they're physically at the same site. But yeah, this site is yeah pretty old and no version twos. They're just obsolete. The technical reason why is that the communication standard, uh, these don't speak CCS or, you know, the ISO standard. These are Tesla CAN bus only communications. And Tesla will be replacing these with full version four, which we'll see in the next part of the video. So here is a version four supercharger, not a full version four yet. The cabinet is not version four, but the dispensers are version four. So let's go over to Lordsburg. Okay, everyone, we're here in Lordsburg, New Mexico at this brand new version four site. Well, technically it's a version 3.5. Over here we have the power cabinets and there's a look at the spec label. So yeah, these are version three cabinets, the version four cabinets instead of being a grid pattern as you see highlighted there at the top of the supercharger cabinets it has uh, horizontal vents instead of a grid pattern vents at the top of the cabinets and that's how you can tell future version 4 but anyways these are the version 4 dispensers uh, or charge pedestals as they call them posts and they have this very long cord so if you have a tesla or other nax vehicle like the future kia ev6 uh, current hyundai ionic 5 2025 model it's just a long cord you can see here it's like a two meter cord, six feet cord, and it's very long, so I'm way over here. So yeah, so if you have a NAX vehicle, you wanna use your own adapter, use this, but they all have a built-in adapter. You can see up here, Magic Dock. That's what they call it. How to use it, press this button for two seconds. You'll hear an electronic click, you have to push, you have to push it up and then it'll unlatch and then here's the magic dock and just like the tesla gen 3 wall connectors ac uh, chargers you cannot it's electronically locked so no one can steal it plug into your vehicle as you see there i plugged it in my vehicle once you're done you just unplug um, your vehicle and then you put it back up and then you put it up and it'll latch in and then when it's latched in then the teslas or other nax vehicles can just use this as normal so it supports a thousand volts whenever the cabinets have thousand volt support but yeah the uh version 4 cabinets are very will be very helpful to thousand volt evs but otherwise the tesla experience is very nice the price you see is the price you pay it's final pricing there's no added fees like electrify america where they add eight percent and the pricing is pretty fair especially here in new mexico i have a separate video on that but let's go back to the version 3 site to wrap up the video so now that you're charging up, you might want to know what are the disadvantages of a Tesla supercharger. If you're charging between 20 and 80%, it's about twice as slow here at a Tesla station, about 35 minutes instead of about 18 minutes, 20 to 80% at a full power 800 volt station. And yeah, that's the biggest disadvantage. So if you need to burn a little more time, you can see right here I'm at a restaurant. So if you want to take a longer meal stop, about half an hour instead of about 20 minutes, if you have other stuff to do, then the Tesla supercharger isn't that bad. Now, if you're charging from about 50% to full at a Tesla station, it'll take about it'll take about 40 minutes. At a full power site, it'll be only 30 minutes. So it's only about 33% slower when you're going from 50 to about 100%. And if you're doing just the top 80% from 80 to 100, there's almost no difference. It's about the same speed if you're charging above 80% state of charge, which I would only recommend if you really need to stretch it or if you're really in a rural area. So the advantages of the Tesla supercharger, so the prices are quite a bit lower here in my region in New Mexico and also in Texas. And also you can see here, it's a busier 
area. Most superchargers are busier, so I'd say that's uh, for better or for worse. I'd say for the most part, it's a good thing. You're not just out here sitting alone charging. You're charging with other people. There's usually more amenities at a Tesla supercharger compared to other networks like Electrify America. So yeah, it's just busier. You'll see more people. There's a perceived safety benefit when you're charging next to other electric vehicles. So yeah, that's the advantage of the supercharger network. So cheaper price usually, especially in my region here in the Southwest. And it's usually busier, so you usually get better amenities. And you'll see other people, so you won't feel like you're just sitting here like a lone duck. I'd say it's a good option, especially if you want to either save money or you want to get better amenities. If you're really looking for the quickest charge, this won't be here yet. We'll have to wait until full version four cabinets are out, rolled out later, probably in late 2025, early 2026. But yeah, that'll be it for this video, showing you everything you need to know about charging your Kia EV6 at a Tesla supercharger. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out the algorithm. And remember, subscribing costs you nothing, but helps the channel grow exponentially. About 95% of my viewers are not subscribed, and the YouTube algorithm really penalizes me. If you want to go the extra mile, you can go to co-fi.com slash penguin1 to buy me a coffee, because obviously charging isn't cheap, tires aren't cheap. So you can support me directly that way. And uh, be sure to look for future Kia EV6 videos, including EV6 road trips. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments below, and I'll try to get back to you about charging your Kia EV6 or anything else. Again, thanks for watching, everyone.